I did also notice that the winning Conservative candidate didn't want to say anything good about his own leader and ran a campaign well, this, entirely on attacking the Labour Party. Is this a line to take the from Labour HQ this evening? Because yeah. Peter yeah. Carl said exactly No, I think the it's because we're thinking along like minds, me and Peter. I haven't <laughs> heard a word that Peter's saying. I've been upstairs in another part of this building. You don't need to, they've um, already written down for you. It's, it's <laughs> absolutely not the case. This is exactly how I feel, which is why would you have a Tory MP who can't even find anything nice to say about his leader and run a campaign that's not on Conservative ca ca um, successes it's just attacking the Labour Party for something which actually the Conservative government has decided to make yeah make a Labour mayor do the, do That's the absolutely do the untrue and, and a complete lie and, and you should not be saying it on air. Fail. I'm the roads minister. And fail. With a, a minister and for local transport fail. who literally oversees this policy area, and you just made things up live on air. Fail. Because you're desperate to avoid the fact that this is a disastrous result for the Labour Party. And You've just said that thousands of volunteers from across the country came to Uxbridge. Yes. They to speak up for Keir Starmer. Yes. Well, you can see what what the result and consequence of that was. 495 uh, m uh, margin, and I'm going to have to finish my sentence now, have held which that is seat. the Tories have decided to support some cities with their transition to clean air in completely different ways Six from others. Six billion pounds and over I two really years. I really think for the Mayor of it's London. time that you Six acknowledge the fact pounds. that under a cost of living crisis in which the Tories have crashed we the economy, we gave London more than anywhere else due to the massive public sa transport sector. I, I mean, feel free to carry on. Well, I mean, I seem to know more about the entire. Situation than you do. The, 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 no, you know an awful lot about shouting over me, which is really deep. This is not the tone that we like on, on this program, Richard. I have to say, um, obviously, if you want to criticise what Thang said, you're absolutely free free to do so. But can we just tone it down a little bit, please? But what about the point, Thang, that this, I mean, this this policy, I mean, uh, well, Richard, in, in a calmer way, just explain why you think that Thang is wrong. Well, Thang was wrong to try and blame the Conservative Party for the ULES. cost of living crisis. Which is exactly... No, which... Well, Boris well, Johnson introduced ULES. Uh, certainly not the expansion to the no. uh, boundary he didn't. Uh, and, cert and actually, in, uh, in the election in which the current Mayor of London stood on, he wasn't going to expand it to the Greater London Boundary either. That was something which was changed in the last couple of years, uh, which was backed by Labour, the Lib Dems and the Greens on the London Assembly, and only opposed by the Conservatives. Uh, that's a Labour policy choice to do what they want to do. Uh, that's anti-car policy in London. That's fully their choice. It's certainly not foisted on them by anybody else. And uh, for you can to say foisted. And, and I think it's important that we're clear here. We're exactly all in favour of clean air, Richard, and we all want that. I want that because it's better for children's health. It's better for their, better for well-being. What we need to have is a just transition towards a clean air zones, and I think that's really important that we're clear about that. Yeah. Now, why were people so concerned about the ULEZ in a Tory cost of living crisis when you guys had crashed the economy, sending people's mortgages sky high and their rents and they're struggling with high rates of food inflation it's no wonder they were concerned about you Liz. Right. so we've got to take that context but the background to all of this the background to all of this Andrew, I want to bring Jackie and Andrew in for a moment let's calm things down a little bit Jackie I'm interested in Andrew's view about why I mean, it's clear that ULES is a significant issue in Uxbridge, but Labour still should have won. Why Why didn't they, do you think, Andrew? Uh, I think the pivotal mistake was on the 4th of July when Labour's candidate came out and said, actually, I'm opposed to ULES. I think if you go into a by-election, Labour had a narrative going into this by-election, which was everything Thangham's just said. Cost of living crisis, the economy's tanked, people's mortgages are going up, inflation's sky high, wages are falling in real terms, the NHS is in crisis, schools are underfunded, you know, got a teacher recruitment crisis. All of those things are things that are causing Labour to have a big lead in the polls nationally. The Tories, uh, and plus you've got Boris Johnson's scandals as well, so you've got that hanging over the, the whole campaign. And instead of talking about that, you've got the Tories quite rightly, trying to divert things onto you, Liz, which has nothing to do with the parliamentary election. And Labour's candidate came out and went, actually, you've got a point there. Maybe it is about that. That's the mistake that was made, in my view. You know, plus, you know, he's a councillor in Camden, where he backed you, Liz, coming in. So it's a bit silly to suddenly, it doesn't look right, it didn't smell right. And if both candidates are saying, actually, you, Liz, is an issue, which one a voter's going to pick? The one who really means it or the one who's pretending for two weeks of a by-election? I think that was a mistake. What frankly. do you think... No, just hang on, let's get Thang's reaction to that, because that sounds entirely logical, what Andrew said there. 
I think that what Danny did was show that he was prepared to stand up for the people of Uxbridge and South Ryslip, and he showed it by being brave enough to listen to what they were saying. But the background to all of this and what I campaigned on when I went to Uxbridge and South Ryslip was relentlessly about cost of living, it was about the increased mortgages, increased rents, and people struggling to make ends meet. Hillingdon Hospital came up a lot. That's despite the fact that the Tory government promised us 40 new hospitals, but they're certainly not anywhere to be seen in Hillingdon, which so badly needs that attention. I spoke to health workers who were desperately upset at the conditions in which they were trying to treat patients. This is a Conservative but, government that offers us no hope okay, for the okay. future. Well, look, but tactically, Andrew's right, isn't he? That was, that was a tactical mistake. Well, I wish that we had been in a different position, obviously, because I would have liked Danny to be the next MP for Uxbridge and South Ryslip, but it was a close result. It had a swing to Labour away from the Conservatives, mm. and I'm hoping that that will be something we can build on. But it was, Ian, it was a tech safe Tory seat, and it's been a safe Tory seat since forever, and I think it was always going to be a stretch for us even to give them a run for their money. The fact that we were so close is, is a really think, impressive I think, work. I mean, I've seen you on, on the TV earlier this evening. I suspect when you walked into the first studio that you did this evening you were expecting a Labour victory in that seat? I didn't know because I was nowhere near any of the counts. I was hoping for Labour victory of course